Hello guys, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session where I'll be talking about top 5 frameworks in Python. So without wasting any more time, let's look at the agenda for this session. So first of all, I'll be starting with what exactly are frameworks in Python. Moving further, we will discuss why we are using frameworks and then I will list out the top 5 frameworks that we have in Python, namely Django, Web2Py, Flask, Bottle and CherryPy. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. So let's quickly try to understand what are frameworks in Python. Python is a general purpose programming language. It is one of the most popular programming language nowadays. We can use it for so many applications including web development. Now a framework is a collection of modules or packages which helps in writing web applications or it helps in web development. Now we don't have to worry about the low level details such as protocols, sockets or thread management when we are working with a framework. Frameworks make the developers life easier by giving them a structure for app development. They automate the implementation of common solutions which gives the flexibility to the developer to focus only on the application logic instead of the routine processes. They provide common patterns for faster, reliable, scalable and easily maintainable web applications. Now let's take a look at a few operations that are used to run web applications using frameworks. So I have listed down all the operations here. So first of all, we will talk about URL routing. So URL routing is the mechanism of mapping the URL directly to the code that creates the web page. The next one is the input form handling and validation. Coming on to the next operation is output formats with templating engine. Now you must be wondering what a templating engine is. A template engine allow developers to generate a desired content types. For example, HTML, XML or JSON. We also have the data connection configuration and persistent data manipulation through an ORM. ORM is also known as object relational mapper. Now you must be wondering what is the function of an ORM. An object relational mapper or an ORM is a code library that automates the transfer of data stored in a relational database table into the objects that are most commonly used in an application code. We also have the web security against cross sites request forgery also known as CSRF, SQL injection, cross site scripting and other common malicious attacks as well. The last but not the least is the session storage and retrieval. So these are only a few operations we can perform using the frameworks in Python. Now let's try to look at a few advantages of Python frameworks. First of all, Python frameworks are open source, which means you don't have to spend any money while working on a Python framework. The next one is it has a very good documentation. All the frameworks in Python have a very good documentation which means you can learn easily the functionalities and the key features of any framework using the good documentation that it has. The next one is the security where it provides security against the malicious attacks and then there is integration and efficiency as well. So these are the advantages of using a Python framework for web development. Also there are a few limitations when we are working on a Python framework which is it is open source so the code is going to be public so that is one issue here. Also, there are a few limitations when we are using a framework because the difference between a library and a framework is it adds to a few rules and regulations when it comes to a framework. Now let's try to understand why we are using a framework. Now we know that frameworks make it easier to reuse the code for common HTTP operations and to structure projects so other developers with the knowledge of the framework can easily build and quickly maintain the application. So these are the advantages which is why we are using a Python framework that is easier implementation. We have the maintenance and the readability is pretty good and then there is code reusability as well. So these are the reasons why we are using Python framework instead of a library, right? So now that we have understood what are frameworks and why we are using them in Python and also we have discussed the key features and advantages of Python frameworks. Now let's try to look at the top five frameworks that we have in Python. So first of all, let me talk about Django guys. Django is a free open source and a full stack Python framework which includes all the necessary features by default. It follows the dry principle which says don't repeat yourselves. Also Django uses ORM to map objects to the database tables. Some of the exemplary features of Django are authentication, URL routing, template engine and the ORM. Also there is database schema migrations as well. Now the main databases that Django works with are PostGRE SQL, MySQL, SQLite and Oracle. Also it follows the MVC MVT architecture. So let's try to understand what is an MVC MVT architecture. The model view template or MVT 
is slightly different from MVC, which is the model view controller. In fact, the main difference between the two is that Django takes care of the controller part itself. The controller part is basically the software code that controls the interactions between the model and the view, leaving us with the template. Now, the template is a HTML file mixed with the Django template language. Now, looking at the diagram, we can understand that the developer provides the model, the view, and the template, and then just maps it to a URL, and Django does the magic to serve it to the user. So, this is the MVC MVT architecture, guys, and this is all about Django. Now, let's try to understand the next framework that we have, which is actually Web2Py. Web2Py is a scalable open source and a full stack Python framework. However, you should know that it does not support Python 3. Now, what is so great about Web2Py, right? It comes with its own web based IDE and, among other things, includes a separate code editor, a debugger, and one click deployment as well. Now, looking at the other valuable Web2Py features, it includes no requirement for installation and configuration. It has the ability to run on different platforms. It has the ability to read multiple protocols. It also provides us with data security that prevents such vulnerabilities like cross site scripting, injection flaws, and malicious file execution. It also has an error tracking system through error logging and ticketing systems. Also, it has the ability for role based access control. And last but not the least, it has a backward compatibility that ensures user oriented advancement without the need to lose the ties with earlier versions. So, this is all about Web2Py, guys. These are all the features that we have in Web2Py framework. Now let's talk about the next framework that we have, which is Flask framework. So talking about Flask, Flask is a micro framework, guys. Now the difference between the full stack framework and a micro framework is the full stack framework does the heavy lifting for the application that we are making. But the micro framework is small and very easy to use. Also, when we are using the micro framework, the URL routing is going to be restful for many of the occasions. So this is the basic difference between a full stack and a micro framework guys now let's try to look at the features of the flask framework so i've already told you it is a micro framework it is lightweight and it has a modular design which makes it easily adaptable to developers needs it also includes a number of useful out of the box features which include a built-in development server and a fast debugger it also has an integrated support for unit testing and the restful request dispatching one more thing guys flask supports the Jinja 2 templating now you must be wondering what is a Jinja 2 templating right so Jinja 2 templating is nothing but a modern day templating language made after the Django's template language coming on to the next features we have a flask it has secure cookie support that is the client side sessions then we have WSGI compliance as well which is the web server gateway interface now you must be wondering what is WSGI guys it actually implements the web server side of the WSGI interface for running the Python applications that we are making. Now, Flask is also Unicode based and also has the ability to plug in any ORM. Last but not the least, we have the HTTP request handling as well. So, these are all the key features of Flask framework, guys. Now that we are done with Flask, now let's move on to the next framework that we have, which is Bottle. Talking about Bottle, Bottle is also a micro framework, guys. Originally, it was meant for building APIs. Bottle implements everything in a single source file. It has no dependencies apart from the Python standard library. Now, its default features include routing, templating, utilities, and a basic abstraction over the WSGI standard. Bottle is a perfect solution for prototyping, learning the organization of web frameworks, and building simple personal apps. So, these are the features of Bottle framework, which is also a micro framework, guys, just like Flask. So, now that we are done with the key features of Bottle, Let's take a look at the next framework that we have, which is CherryPy. CherryPy is an open source minimalist web framework. It makes building Python web applications no different than building any other object oriented program. It allows you to use any type of technology for templating, data access, and so on. However, it's still able to handle sessions, statics, cookies, file uploads, and everything else that a web framework typically can. Now let's try to take a look at some default features of CherryPy. It has an HTTP compliant WSGI thread pool web server. It has the simplicity of running multiple HTTP servers at once. It also has a powerful configuration system, a flexible plugin system, 
it also has out of the box tools for caching encoding sessions authentication static content etc now cherry pie also has a built-in support for profiling coverage and testing and last but not the least it also has the ability to run on different platforms so this is all about cherry pie guys now that we are done with the top five frameworks and we have discussed the key features of all these frameworks let me take you to pycharm guys where i have a sample project that i have made on django and flask so this is actually where my project is saved guys so i'll go to my project and this manage.py file is actually the file which helps with the management of the site and we can start a web server without installing anything else so i'll copy this path guys and i'll go to the project that i made over here and if you want to know how you can make a project or install Django on your system and then make a web app, you can simply go to the Edureka YouTube channel where we have the detailed tutorial about Django, in which we have a detailed tutorial about Django web development and where you can actually learn to build a simple app from scratch. So, what I'll do is I'll just write the path that I have copied. So, now that I'm in my directory where I want to run my server. I'll just write python dot manage dot py to run my server. I'll just write run server. Now you have to pay a little attention to these files that you get while creating your project in Django. So these files are there. So settings dot py file actually has the configuration of your website and URL dot py have the list of patterns that will be used by the URL solver. And then you have the database, the time zones and everything else that you can actually edit in your settings.py file. So I'm not going to go line by line explaining everything. So I'll just explain you that I have one more directory pools over here, which is actually my app. And in this I have migrations and the template inside the template. I have the HTML file where I have actually written the code of my survey form that I have made that I will show you guys. So when I run this server, what is going to happen is I'll get address wait let it run so i'm getting this address guys so when i go on this address and write polls that is the name of my app i will get this survey form that i have made and stored inside the template that i had made so this is actually a very basic survey form that you can make from using the django app so let me show you guys what the same thing you can do using flask so i have also made a project using flask as well so in this we have the main file main.py when you install flask you can simply import it and there is no i'll show you guys in the project interpreter so inside in project interpreter you can just add flask over here if you don't have installed it in your system you will find it over here you can install the package and you are good to go so now that uh, i have told you about the main.py then we have a render template in which we are going to store the HTML file, the template that we have. Inside this, I have also written the same code for the survey form. And to run this server, we are just going to run this main file. And you will get an address, see over here. And when you go over here and type the name of your app, that is profile, you will get the same survey form that I had got. So, this is a sample project, guys, that you can make for practice. Although it is a very basic thing that you can do, you can connect it to your database and there are so many things that you can do while using these projects. So this is only a very basic project that I have done using this. So now that we have come to the end of the session guys, if you have any questions about these frameworks or you want to learn more about these frameworks, you can go to the documentations of these respective frameworks or you if you want to know more about Django, we have a detailed tutorial about Django web development where we have told you about how to make a project how to start your app how to make a simple app from scratch and if you have any questions guys you can put them in the comment section below and our team will get back to you as soon as possible thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!